We mentioned earlier about the thickness of cylinder walls. The absolute best way to determine this uh, is to have the wall sonic tested. Your machine shop can facilitate this procedure with no problem. And you will know to the thousandths of an inch what you are dealing with. And all the machine shops, they have their preferences in terms of measurement, but they're all real close. Like one might say, uh, you know, 200 thou on the thrust side. The next guy will say, you know, 180. These numbers are not important as far as what is quoted in this video. I just grabbed those out of the air. But uh, it is wise to follow their recommendations on your block. If you take your block in right at the very beginning of stripping it down for Magnaflux and Sonic testing, it will save you a ton of time and money because you will know right out of the gate that your block is not cracked and has adequate thickness in the crucial areas of the cylinder walls, therefore making it a viable choice for your build. You've heard us say that we are using Vortex heads and you have to use a Vortex intake with Vortex heads. We are using a Gen 1 block as you know but there could be someone out there that hasn't taken a closer look at the core they intend to build. There are differences between the two to be sure, specifically a Vortec long block and a Gen 1. The first one is very important because you can overheat a Vortec and if you don't notice before you make it back, the crack damage may already be done. Here's the rub. Gen 1s have an internal coolant bypass and Vortec blocks have an external. The following panels show the difference between the two. On this one, you'll have three holes. This hole right here, the bottom one, is the bypass. The internal bypass for the Gen 1, so when the thermostat's closed, you still get some kind of cooling, some kind of flow. Vortec only has this and this on both sides. Note the Vortec intake on the left and the Performer RPM on the right. Note the angle of the intake bolts on each. The intakes are not interchangeable. If you try to run a Vortec water pump on a Gen 1, you'll have coolant all over the floor. It'll run out of that third hole we showed you earlier. But what if you want to run a carb set up on the Vortec block? You install the intake manifold and you put a plug in this hole right here. Well, don't do that. Because that is where the external water bypass is on a Vortec intake. You'll have an extra nipple on the Vortec water pump. You connect the two and you're golden. Without installing the connection between the two, like a hose, will result in a possible cracked block, something you don't want to have anything to do with. It has happened. Now, as ingenious as racers are, someone came up with, a, with drilling holes in the thermostat. And it works. Not something I'd do, but people do it. On the performer intake for the Gen 1, there is no hole. It's not drilled. It's not required. Here's a shot of us branding our pistons and rods before they go to the machine shop. If you've ever had your stuff come back from machining and it doesn't belong to you, it's a very sinking feeling. One viewer commented that some racers were trying to fool the tech inspectors at the track by using a 400 block with two freeze plugs on the side saying it was a 350. You know, 400s came with two or three freeze plugs on the side. The viewer got you know what it out of his 400 block. And my guess is the racers got caught. It's a senseless attempt at cheating. I don't think anybody likes cheaters. But it does happen. 
you never go back to that shop again. And I speak from experience. I had three pistons and a crank come back without my marks. I never went back. Here we are checking rod side clearance before we send it to the machine shop because there are these are the new forged rods we'll be using and we hadn't taken that measurement yet. With everything balanced, these full floating rods and icon pistons ought to make a pretty friction free rotating assembly. It just seems that everything fights you. You know, you try to get everything ready, get it to go, get it to the machine shop, and every freaking thing fights you. First, it was some, you know, there's been many issues, but these last two was the flex plate and the dampener. And um, they got stuck in a snowstorm up in some mountain pass for a week. And this latest thing is concerns uh, the crank fired ignition. We're going to have crank fire ignition on this motor, and there's an issue concerning that. So that should be here Thursday. Should be able to resolve that on Thursday as soon as we receive it, and then we are ready to go.